just in case you don't know who I am, I want to introduce myself. Um, I'm from Clairvoyant Analytics, formerly Thomson Reuters IP and Sciences. We just recently got our new name and um, forgive me if I mispronounce it. I'm still trying to get used to the new sound. Clairvoyant Analytics. Um, I think data standards are really fascinating. I have never seen a person who would say, I don't really want any standards. Everybody wants them, but everyone wants to have their own standards. So that's why we keep developing new standards. Uh, in case of Transmart, it may not be you know, possible to have one size fits all standards, but at least we can start collecting kind of guidelines and best practices and see what we can um, kind of harmonize across different users, different organizations, and um, just have some examples. Because um, it, it's really hard, I think, especially for new users. I remember when I started with Transmart about two years ago, it was a very steep learning curve and there was no documentation and I was just happy I could find a manual for Transmart 1.0 from j, j even though I was using 1.2, but 1.0 was giving me some idea about wh what it is about. And there was also some um, Transmart testing scripts from Sanofi that they were just using when they were testing it, which is, was kind of relevant to the 1.2. And between those two, I made some sense out of Transmart. It's much better now. We have the starter pack available. There is a manual available on the Transmart. There are some case studies also available, but I think we should continue walking into the direction so new users have an easier time than I had two years ago. OK, so um, today I wanted to talk about different types of studies and how we can represent and how we've been representing different type of studies in Transmart and what are the challenges with some of the type of clinical trials uh, that we have encountered. And uh, in the second part of my talk, in after uh, the break, uh, I will also come back and talk about associating data. So who is using Transmart? So we are vendors, so we work with our customers and we take into consideration what our customers work and based on that we develop our curation practices. So we work with non-clinical data analysts that want to use uh, Transmart for analysis and we work with discovery scientists. And the way they use Transmart, they use it for storage, some of them, and then just taking the data and analyzing it with other tools and some of the uh, analysts analyze data in Transmart directly. What would they would like? Uh, first of all, they would like to find the data because we upload 200 to 800 variables per study, and they want to find uh, the right variables that they want to analyze and either s use them to select subsets in the Transmart or um, download them for other analysis. And they also want to match data to the original source. We get files. We get files for curation. They come from other databases, and they want to make sure that they can look at the variable in Transmart and go to this other database and find the same variable there. And they want consistency between studies. So this is a typical Transmart tree that we have developed working with Pfizer. And this is a fake study. I have made it using data um, and clinical protocol from Roche. Roche is not our client, and they cannot come after me for using uh, something proprietary. So, But they do post their protocols on their website. And so I have used that protocol and created a, a mock-up tree. But this tree follows the um, layout uh, that we use when we create data uh, for, for Pfizer, with, and we've been working with Pfizer for, for a couple of years, and uh, this design has been developed over the time we had a number of meetings with data users and data owners, and we have discussed how we put different data where. And this is related to Philippe's topic at 
we get this data that are in this SDDM format. So we get adverse events in the AE data set, we get lab in the lab data set, we get uh, vital signs in the vital sign VC data set. So they ha already have SDDM format to begin with. And our job is to put them into the Transmart tree based on the requirement that we have from our customers. So the uh, general approach that we have worked out is to load the data in a way that it will um, be a narrative to the clinical trial protocol. A clinical trial protocol gets attached to the study at uh, the metadata as a flat file and then anyone who who wants to understand uh, this study better, they can download the clinical protocol, read about different uh, endpoints that were collected, and then go to the Transmart tree and find these endpoints exactly in the same place at the clinical trial specify them. So the way our um, trees usually look is that we have efficacy endpoints, we have safety endpoints that were collected, and then we have um, treatment groups and subjects information and the un under safety that are usually adverse events, lab results and vital signs, um, the physical e exam is PE data set and usually goes under the safety endpoints as well. Under efficacy, that's um, a value added data sets usually, it's pre-analyzed endpoints for efficacy of a drug. Okay, and um, as we load this data into Transmart, we actually keep the um, names of the original data sets and the codes for each variable that came from the, from the SATS data sets. So they, they can be mapped back to the original data sets, to the original SATS database from where they came from. So to facilitate data exploration by non-regulatory scientists, we follow um, protocol for the clinical trial because it's easier for people to understand. Uh, but we still preserve the references to the SDDM formatted data so they can be mapped back to the original source. And this is just how this looks at the end. So we have this tree, we get all these different data sets and then uh, we map them to different um, protocol um, data collection descriptions and we build a tree out of that. So, and the tree is pretty standard. We try to follow the same rules. We load the data the same way for all of the studies that we curate. And the only difference that could be is um, additional safety and additional efficacy endpoints that might have been collected for specific studies. Sometimes there are some exploratory endpoints that don't fit anywhere. And then, then we create a different um, branches for the tree. So, and as Philip mentioned, I would like to talk about a complex clinical trial design. What do you do with, with when you have a complex clini clinical trial design and you still want to make this data understandable by people who's going to use it? And this is a simple example, and it's actual, I, I got it from clinicaltrial.gov. And uh, GlaxoSmithKline is not our client either. So that's why I'm using them as a, an example. So in this crossover, in crossover, basically when the same subject is being used as an, a, a test and control. So one period the subject is being treated with a drug, another period the subject is on placebo, and then another period the subject is on the drug. And in this example, in this clinical trial, they had four-way crossover. It means that they had four periods in which period subject was either on on a drug or uh, on a placebo, and it was ascending dose. So when the patient was on a drug, it was a different dose every time. Okay, and then in addition to that, they also randomize um, cohort one and two to four treatment sequences, and then um, 
they did different crossover for cohorts three, four, and five, and then they also had cohorts six and seven that were randomized even some other way. So a lot of different um, kind of moving parts. And I, I just took a very simple slice of a crossover study. And this is an individual example, and it's a part of it. Here you see you have four periods, you have two cohorts, and the study is escalating, so the dose goes up with each period. So you have the same subject, which is on different, uh, it, it has different dose in different periods, and then you have different subjects that have the same dose in different periods. And it's a real example from a real clinical trial, and it's just a part of it. In addition to this, <coughs> this clinical trial also had a different formulation, different regimen, twice a day or three times a day, and fed and fasted state. Okay, and then you have to make sense of it when you're loading the data. Okay, so um, consider this is your data. So you have here subjects in this crossover study. I made it up. So you have um, subjects one through four, and this is adverse events data. And um, the reason I'm using adverse events, it's um, an event. So SDDM, it has observations, and observations are recorded during visits, planned visits, and it's easy to load them during those uh, associated with those visits. Event happens when it happens, and it's recorded when it's, it happens. So adverse events are, are not reported per visits. There is log adverse events, all of them at the same time. So you have here two subjects, two examples. They had um, headache, severe, and it was related to treatment in period three and it was a 10 milligram dose. So in here, what you want, uh, you load the data here, and you want to reproduce this data. So you, you have loaded your data, here's your data. You have uh, severe um, adverse events, and under severe you have related or not related to your drug treatment, and you, you see that you have a subject that, um, two subjects that had severe headache related to the drug treatment, and your question is, uh, what was the drug dose? And you try to select subsets, so you just select the whole study and you drop it into grid view, and no matter what you do, you cannot really unambiguously associate your severe headache with a particular dose. So here you got headache, and this subject was in period one on placebo, on period two on placebo, then it was on 10 milligram, on 15 milligram. The other subject also had different uh, regim drug regimens associated with this headache. And you, you think if you can take this um, headache from here, and use it as a subset selection instead of taking the whole study as I took here. Maybe you can then associate it, but it doesn't work like that in trans Transmart because subset selection only works to limit the subjects. And if the subject had more than one variable, more than one uh, value for that variable, it's still going to bring in all of those variables. So you have to associate this somehow and kind of brings me to my second part of my talk. Okay, so the solution here is not very difficult. Here what you do is you just load everything per period because in every period subject was on this or that drug and uh, adverse events were reported uh, per period in my uh, fake study. So you can load everything per period and then you can associate your subject with the um, headache with severe he headache that was um, drug related and you associate them with the right dose. So if period is not reported, then you're out of luck. So then you have to pre-process your data. You have to look at the day from and day two in your data set and from that and from your protocol 
assign it to a specific period. Otherwise, you just have no way of associating it once you put it in the trans mark. Okay. Another example is adaptive clinical trial. And I haven't really curated any adaptive clinical trials, but I can imagine that can be um, challenging. So here is another example from Glaxo Smith Klein, who is not our client. So in this clinical trial, they have um, cohort one and cohort two. So in the first cohort, uh, they just had several doses, different doses, and then they run them in parallel, which is easy. And then in cohort two, they've used uh, what they've learned from cohort one, and they have started to assign different doses from uh, two different subjects. So in reality, how this can look, so usually everything goes in parallel, and the subjects are being enrolled as they come in, because it's not like um, a sponsor of a study can go somewhere and just grab a big bunch of patients. So they advertise the clinical trials, they try to recruit subjects, and they come in one at a time. Let's say one subject comes every two to four weeks, and when the subjects come in, a different dose is assigned to this subject, depending on what safety and efficacy information is available from the cohort one and the cohort two that is already being um, um, in this study, from the subjects that have been enrolled in this study. So, and you go uh, ahead and you look at these clinical trials and you load them the way you usually load your clinical trials. You have your um, week one and week 12, and you have your heart rate recorded in vital signs, and then a, a researcher comes in and they want to see whether this drug has any effect on the heart rate, and uh, uh, they assume that from week one to week 12, the subject has been on the drug for a while now, let's see what happens, and they just drag and drop this two weeks into the summary statistics, and they find that there was no changes to the heart rate between week one and week two. But this is really misleading if you just look into this data. And um, um, this reminded me of a Russian joke. I googled it, Americans don't joke that, that way. So there is a joke about average temperature, temperature at the hospital. So if you look at the temperature uh, some people have an emergency room during flu season and just average them with morgue, uh, then you will get normal temperature. So pretty much, this is pretty much what happens here because you don't really know what drug dose uh, the subjects have received because it was adjusted as they were enrolled into the study and um, the data became available from uh, other subjects in cohort one and cohort two that were already um, were um, tested. So for adaptive design, what you can do is you can consider loading your subjects per uh, dose. So that's why um, you, you really don't care what visit was that for the safety, or um, you can load them both ways depends on what kind of information you're, you're trying to um, get from your analysis. But if you load them from a per, um, drug dose and then you do the same exercise and you look at the subjects that have received 20 milligram and the subjects that have received 60 milligram, then you see that uh, 60 milligram leads to elevation in heart rate and that could be alarming. So the so study design, the transmart tree, is, is very important for um, uh, understanding what this clinical trial was about and to actually being able to analyze the data and produce faithful results. So if you're looking at this crossover studies and, um, and the adaptive clinical trials, uh, then you need to consider what kind of analysis you're going to do and how you're going to structure your transmart tree that will allow you to do that kind of analysis. And then you may want to load them per duration of therapy, per total daily dose, per frequency, per formulation, per fasted stage. So there's 
many different ways of um, loading the data. And it is possible that one size just doesn't fit all. So there has to be some sort of a harmonization between what you want to do with this data and how you want to exchange this data with um, other people, with collaborators, or maybe or collaborators from other projects. So Philippe was talking about STDM format, and yesterday it was a great presentation on how you take data and you map them to STDM format um, and then load them into Transmart tree. Um, another way of looking at it is you, you take your data and they are, you map them to STDM format, then you load them into whatever design works best for a particular project, but you do have the STDM mapping, and then when you need to download the data or exchange them with your um, partners, you just download them in STDM format or send them in a STDM format. And this is something that we actually have implemented for our, one of our customers. So the workflow was like that. We had the uh, data from customers, and uh, then we had uh, a curation interface, and the curation inter interface, we were mapping this data to uh, the STDM um, format. And at the same time, creating Transmart tree mapping, so those two things, uh, the map, STDM map, and the Transmart tree map. Then the data were loaded into Transmart, and then there was also an option to download this data back into, into this um, format uh, for um, STDM domains. So that's all I have for this part. So in the next part, after our break, I, I plan to talk at the end about more challenges about connecting the right variables. Um, now I can take questions. Thanks, that's a really nice presentation, Natalia. Um, I think you highlighted some problems, and what's really in my head is um, in 17.1 we'll be adding modifiers to Transmart. And this could completely change you know, the whole game, but it doesn't solve the fundamental problem that um, uh, on the one way you have your source data and the other way uh, in Transmart you want to make it easier for people to analyze the data, so to some extent as you've shown you try to organize the data in such a way that that analysis becomes easy rather than just presenting the data sort of as is. I would be very interested in your opinion on, f for example, in this example, how would you use modifiers, right? That would, um, and maybe uh, you don't actually have to answer it now because um, you probably have to think about it and write some scenarios, but I, I feel this, this is a should be a follow-up from at least this presentation and yeah, once we have more modifiers and I'm going to test them to see yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what effect they have. It's, it's not just organizing data in the way that makes it easier to analyze. It's organizing data in the way that you don't corrupt them. So the data in your transmark actually reflects the actual data that you have loaded into it. Yeah, and one big limitation, what you also mentioned, is currently, and this can be misleading, if you select data in Transmart, you're actually creating a set of patients yes. rather than a set of data. Um, and you could argue whether that's the right approach, but at least I think um, I, I have to look into the team. Maybe Vart can talk about it tomorrow a bit more in detail on 17.1, but the queries, uh, it should be possible to query also modifiers. Uh, and so that you don't only uh, look at patients, but actually get a data table as results. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, I agree with that comment as well, because, you know, if you've seen from some of these screenshots, you see that you can create an export from Transmart per patient, and you can drag and drop various variables 
So those variables you can view as you know them associate with each other, but in reality it may not have the direct association, and you lose other association of you know, things that's more important. So, so looking forward to see the modifier coming out. <laughs> Any other questions? This is this is completely unrelated. I'm sorry, Natalia, but I just wanted to bring this up from yesterday just to continue the conversation. I'm not sure if I'll be here for the panel, so I wanted to bring this up. Um, yesterday we talked about the fact that reusing data is difficult, and I've been thinking about this since last night. Uh, there's got to be something we can push forward. And is anyone familiar with the um, sprint trial that's going to be available next week? So the New England Journal of Medicine is going to release a clinical trial to people based on that data parasite argument that was in their journal. And so I'm wondering if we can use that data to make a case for Transmart and data reuse beyond data sharing. Data sharing is easy if you follow the, the um, contract, but as we know, we can't share the data again. And maybe we can show them what we can do as a foundation using the data more than once. Because that's the point of why they're doing this challenge. The challenge is to show what you can do with the data without, that, that you wouldn't be able to as a data scientist because you have access to it. So if we can show that having it in a platform makes it more accessible, I'm wondering if that's something we can do. So, sorry, I know that's a digression, but if anyone has thoughts about that, I'd love to talk with them. I, I love that idea, so totally, definitely supporting that. Yeah, see thumbs up as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah def definitely we, we can circle around emails and try to work on that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>